Thanks for joining me again. Uh, I'm gonna take you through a few things I've learned since the last time I did a video, uh, custom stitching, some other stuff like that. Just to catch up to speed, if you're just joining in now, my end goal is to learn custom embroidery with an embroidering machine so that I can make patches that have circuits integrated into them. And we're getting a lot closer. I'm about ready to start on the actual circuit part. Not quite there yet, but we're, we're close. So what have I done since last time? Well, the first thing I did is I built this sewing station. I started with a yoga mat from an old Nintendo uh, Wii yoga game, and I put it on this nasty workbench that I had in my basement so that I had a nice surface to work on. I painted a, a board black and put a bunch of nails in it so I could hold thread uh, so that I can see all my threads and choose the ones that I want. Now that I've got this nice little setup for getting stuff done, it's a lot easier to work. It's a lot more pleasant to work in this little area than on my main workbench where I have to move everything out of the way each time. Now what have I learned on the actual product side, on, on the actual embroidering side? Let me show you. Okay, when we left off last time, this is what I had made. And that's it. And this isn't perfect. It's a little bit sloppy. It's got all these little holes and freckles and stuff. And so I ran the program again, ran it through the software again, being a little bit more intelligent about how I did things. I added this background to make a full patch. And you can see it's solid. I, I reworked everything. It's much better, but it's not perfect. It seemed like there was um, something I was missing you know, in terms of, of how to get the definition and the outlines and stuff. So I started looking around and I've got all of these, all of these patches that I've gotten either from Maker Faires or from uh, NASA. And most of these are from Adafruit. They've got a patch system that's great. And while I was looking at these, I started noticing that they seemed like there was intelligent uh, stitching here. Things like, you know, the stitching and, and these are radially arranged so that you get this nice design or the stitching in this just happens to be parallel to the angles of the container and then your outline is a single stitch. So I knew that somebody was sitting down and taking a, an intelligent approach to doing these. They weren't just letting the software do everything uh, automatically like, like I did here, which was just, you know, automatically letting it fill it all with whatever it wanted. So I dug into the software a little bit and I made some test files. The first test file I did was this and I, I don't know what happened. It just ended up screwed up. So I'm just going to throw that to the side. What I was doing was I was doing different prints to test what the settings on the stitches were. And here's my test file. It's um, nine squares. Each one has a fill and an outline that I can change. And so these are different settings of what the fill is and what the outline is. And you can see there's some really cool patterns available on the fills. Um, might be difficult to see at this scale, but like this one here is a smiley face and a diamond pattern. And then different settings on these outlines on how thick they are and how they wrap around or how thin they are. So I felt like I got a pretty good feel for how it works and I took another run at the octopus. So here is the, the octopus 
after manually determining the stitching. Now, uh, there are, are some ugly things here, like I don't like this black outline at all. I, don't, I really don't like the way it looks. It's too thick and too, makes everything too muddy. Um, but that's my fault, just the way that I set it to do that black outline. Now I know better. It's also a different set of colors because I accidentally loaded the wrong colors into the machine. Not a big deal. Um, but something that I do like is this background now, instead of being a boring fill stitch, it's now this like this wave and then even on the light blue on the tentacles it's got some texture to it which I liked a lot. So I'm actually uh, done with the octopus. Oh I did notice something weird. I, I noticed on the right hand side here the circle's not perfectly round and it didn't meet up. I don't know what the deal is with that. I don't know if that was my file or what. That may be something that comes back to bite me later. I'm still trying to figure that out. So I'm kind of done with the octopus, even though it's really cool, it's not my design. Um, here's something I've been playing with. This is the logo for the Herkimer Battle Jitney from Mystery Men, 1999 movie, the big vehicle Mystery Men. That's the Herkimer Battle Jitney. That's the logo for it. Neither of those are fantastic, but I learned a lot in the process about what details I can do, what details I can't. There's tiny text in there, which fails. Uh, to come through because it's just too small but it taught me a ton of stuff about the embroidery and how it works and the shortcomings of the software and I'll get into that here in a moment and then I've got my brother's restaurant Mangia uh, so there's their logo and then here's some monogramming kind of stuff that we may do on some chef's coats. I'm still working on this lettering. It's too small to be legible. Um, so I have to work that out and, and figure that out. That's kind of something that's stumping me right now is how to deal with text, but we'll talk about that in a moment. And then for the make review of the unit, I did a makey and I botched the M. It's not perfect. And then uh, around the edges of this red I accidentally left some gaps there which are unpleasant but not the end of the world. Something fun though is that it did run out of thread right here and it stopped and told me to load new thread which is fantastic. It's great that this machine is that smart but I'm learning a lot. I think at this point this is good enough quality that I'm ready to start working on circuits embedded into these so I think I'm gonna go ahead and start moving that direction with these videos and uh, pursuing, you know, stuff like the Herkimer Battle Cruiser, um, you know, on my own, of course, still, because that's awesome, or the ba Battle Jitney, I mean. Um, so, all right, so now let's talk a bit about software. Software for embroidery is a mess. The prices are all over the place. I found some that range from 65 all the way up to like $1,000 just for software for creating your embroidery designs. And I'm not saying that designers or, or software creators should give everything away for free, but um, this landscape is just all over the place. It's crazy. And there are a few things that just drive me nuts about it. These people are still marketing software in modules like it was the 80s and early 90s. Like you buy a rasterization module and a font module and each one of those is a hundred bucks or whatever. I just want to buy a package that works. Of course, I could probably get that if I went up to the more expensive ones, you know, the eight and nine hundred dollar ones probably have all of those things built in. So I'm kind of complaining because I'm a cheapskate, but I don't mind paying developers for their software if it's good. Now there is an open source package called Embroider Modder that looks like it could do some stuff I want to do. It looks like it can do the fonts I want to do, except it crashes every time I try to save uh, on both of my computers. I don't know what the deal is. I've, you know, I've tried loading it up making one simple letter and saving it and it crashes. So I can't use Embroider Modder, which is unfortunate because I'd love to support that as an open source project. But right now I'm in the process of reviewing different software packages and I will publish a blog post about that on Make as soon as I have that kind of figured out. Right now I'm looking at SoArt and uh, Embrilliance and Embird. And these are all kind of packages that that have all the features that I want, you know, um, or at least they have modules for the features that I want. So those are the, the three main ones that I'm looking at in my price range, kind of under $200 for the software. All right, I'll see you next time wherein I'll probably actually start pulling conductive thread through the machine. We'll see how that goes.